And now, from the Room 111 Studios, it's Hacking Engagement with James Sternovic. Hey there, listener. Welcome back to the Hacking Engagement Podcast. I'm so glad you're here. If you're like me, you're kind of getting ready for school to start. You're busy as all get out. And I thought I would do an experiment over the next couple weeks because I have to confess, I'm having so much fun with my new book, Teaching in Magenta. And I want to share some short podcasts with you. I mean, obviously, I'm promoting the book, but I also just want to share some of these ideas because they'll enrich your existence as a teacher, whether you ever buy my book. So let me start this story out. A few Christmases ago, my daughter-in-law, Nikki, bought me a book. It was a small volume by a Vietnamese Zen master called Thich Nhat Hanh, entitled How to Walk. (laughs) I thought the gift was cool, but it didn't make a huge impression. (laughs) It wasn't like I immediately isolated myself and dove right into the pages. Instead, it sat by my desk, unopened, all the way up to spring break. And and you know how things, spring break, just things slow down. And and one morning when, when I wasn't in a rush to get to school and start my bus duty, it caught my eye. It was kind of a rainy day out. I was drinking some coffee and I just casually opened it. I was instantly intrigued because each page taught a lesson about walking mindfully. And I'm, I run at a pretty high octane. I, I need mindfulness. <laughs> each lesson was short, just a couple paragraphs. Each short narrative encouraged the reader to walk mindfully through one of life's various challenges. I read a page and I decided I was going to try to apply the directives to my day. <laughs> It was a joy. I don't even remember what the directive was, but but I did it. I think it was kind of like feeling your feet on the ground or something like that. My wife and I were taking a walk. She goes, you know, would you hurry up? <laughs> the next day I read another page and applied it again. That's all it took. I was hooked. I was impressed with how little time it took to consume each page, but the directives were powerful and profoundly impacted me. I also loved the rough sketches that accompanied many of the narratives. I thought to myself, man, wouldn't it be cool to write a book like this? (laughs) So for the next five weeks, I'm going to try and experiment. My new book, Teaching in Magenta, was inspired by Nikki's gift. My book is divided into five sections based on qualities of magenta. Compassion, optimism, balance, adaptability, and contentment. So over the next few weeks, I'm going to, I'm going to take a path to Magenta each week and, and, and read it and talk about it a little bit. And today I'm going to focus on path 57, which can be found in the balance section. And it is entitled, dear listener, close your door. I'll be back right after the break. Here's my elevator pitch for my brand new book, Teaching in Magenta. This book provides 100 ways to create a magnificent day in your classroom. Once you start stringing some magenta days together, you and your students will experience profound well-being and deep joy. (laughs) That's Teaching in Magenta, which is now available on Amazon's virtual shelves. It's really important to emphasize that Teaching in Magenta is a short book. It's only 16,000 words. Each of the 100 paths is roughly 100 to 150 words, and it is meant to be consumed slowly. <laughs> you know, when I read How to Walk by Thich Nhat Hanh, I, I read a page a day and then applied that lesson to my day. You should try to do the same with Teaching in Magenta. You should you should allow the, the book to stretch out, perhaps over nine weeks or a semester. Now, I was so encouraged, but... It, because I read this uh, review on Amazon today from a reader, and this guy's got it, man. He did it exactly right. And I'm going to quote here. As an elementary principal, I'm constantly trying to find new and unique ways to engage with my staff, my parents, and my students. Teaching in Magenta provides an abundance of ideas to help build relationships and focus on the most important aspects of being in education. 
I don't have a lot of time to read, so books that are straight to the point, thought-provoking, and practical are my go-to. This book is exactly that. I would recommend this book not only to educators, but anyone who's looking for strategies to build strong relationships with others. That's perfect. (laughs) I'm so glad he submitted that review. So without further delay, you know, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to focus on uh, Path 57, which is Close Your Door. And just to give a flavor for this book and and, and how how tight and concise these paths are, I'm just going to read it to you right now. Path 57, Close the Door. During a busy school day, do you ever feel like you are swimming in people? Your classes are big, the halls are packed, the lunchroom is a sea of humanity, and the parking lot is a bottleneck. And to top it all off, you desperately have to use the facilities between periods, so you hustle down the bathroom and the faculty lounge, only to find it occupied and the door locked. You need a break. Teachers are givers, but how about today, for just one period, being a taker? Check to see if any student needs you during your planning period. If none do, close the door, turn out the lights, and meditate. Or look at the internet. Or watch stupid videos. Or buy something on Amazon. And allow the world outside your door to evaporate. You know, it always struck me that when I got on an airplane, you know, the safety instructions that are provided before takeoff, passengers are instructed on what to do, If the oxygen mask drop from the ceiling and you're told to put on your mask before you help your children. Now that goes against, I think, every bone in a parent's body. It goes against our nature. But you can't save your kids if you suffocate. Teachers need to apply this analogy to to their day. I mean, think about it. You you can't help students if you're a wreck. You simply must find balance and and take care of yourself. And a great way to do that is to schedule some personal enrichment time every day. I hate to confess this, but I often used to take a short nap during my planning period. I I had a little situation where my, my floor was carpeted and I had a couple of yoga mats in there and I would put my, my legs up on my chair lay my yoga uh, mats down and lay my my back flat and put my legs up on the chair kind of like in a sitting position only sideways and I would crash for about 10 minutes. Now that short snooze was pure bliss and this is important. I in no way, shape, or form consider myself a slacker. I give a lot to my school and my students. I'm entitled to a little me time. When I'd wake up from my nap, I was energized and ready to embrace my next class. My nap made me a better teacher. So my question to you today is how do you maintain your sanity? And don't be embarrassed by this. Self-care is essential. And I'd be interested to know how you, dear listener, grab some sanity during the day. Now to that end, a new collaboration community has been set up and there is a link on my show notes. It's called the Magenta Teacher Community. It's a place where you can share ideas and collaborate with fellow educators. Sure, you can respond to my prompts, like the one I just gave you, (laughs) but how about issuing some of your own? Or better yet, create some brand new paths to teaching in Magenta. So COVID is going to make teaching this year an incredible challenge. I mean, more so than any year, and it's challenging any year, but this year in particular. Make certain, occasionally, to close that door and take care of yourself. (laughs) Good luck tomorrow engaging your kids. Show notes for this episode can be found at jamesallensternivant.com. If you enjoy Hacking Engagement, please subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes.